Hey everybody, it's Thomas from the Booze and BJJ podcast. I'm not drinking today. A long, hard week of training. I swear, it's been like five straight days. Um, today we have Rolando Torres, also known as RT. Um, we're going to have a little bit of a conversation, a little bit of an interview, if you will, with him. And um, let's get started. So uh, RT, go ahead and, uh, if you would, please introduce yourself. Sure. First of all, thank you for having me on the podcast. Um, my name is Rolando Torres. I'm 32, uh, BGJ black belt, um, competitor, army veteran. I'm also a deputy out here in Indiana where I live at. Um, I just love jujitsu. That's me. Awesome. Um, question. So you said you're an army veteran and you're a deputy? Yes, I am. Um, does jujitsu help you and your, your deputy in your uh, law enforcement? Um, activities it, it it actually does because uh i mean there's situations where 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 it, it, it calls for hands-on you know and the just definitely helps out you know not not saying anything bad about other deputies but i mean um there's just certain things that i'm able to do that most of the guys aren't able to do because of jujitsu you get what i'm saying right yeah yeah, yeah one one thing that um I like personally about jujitsu is the um, the amount of control that you can have, like over someone who's attacking you. You know, um, you know, as a, as an older guy, I guess you could say, um, the way that I handle the younger dudes is by con- like literally controlling what they're doing, and that's one of the things that I personally like about jujitsu. But um, enough about me, more about you. Um, sure. How did you start uh, in BJJ? Oh man, well, my sister's ex-boyfriend Jay Ramos um just knocked on my door one day and he says, Hey man, you know, like uh I'm doing this uh this UFC thing, uh, you gotta come try it out. And I was 15 at the time, so we're talking like uh 2004, 2005 around there. So it was a long time ago. And at this point, MMA UFC wasn't even on TV just yet. You know, it was still like playing at three o'clock in the morning, and it was just like reruns of like these little prepaid commercials, right? Like pretty much buy this DVD for 1999, you know, and enjoy watching people punch each other in the face, like no holds bar type thing. And I seem interested at first, but you know, I was like a little hesitant. I was the youngest guy there. So I said, screw it, I'm gonna go and um went try to class out. I think the first thing I learned was a a leg lock and then a Kamara after that. So I, I was pretty much hooked after that. You know, a rough upbringing got turned out to drugs at an early age and you know it was a turning point in my life yeah there's 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 a few guys i've practiced with who have have a similar backstory and you know they're doing really good right now um do you have any uh experience in any other martial arts yeah yeah i did judo um from i'm from the bronx originally um and where i lived at in the bronx my dad's street right across the street was um this judo dojo uh, and I used to go down there and do judo all the time, you know, from the time I should, I was like, maybe like 13 or 14 is when I started. So before jiu-jitsu and, um, I started in judo for a couple of years. I did Kyokushin, uh, Muay Thai as well, and wrestled through high school a little bit. So I was pretty much well-versed in other arts. That's awesome. Yeah. A lot of the guys down here who practice BJJ also have some sort of experience in judo that can get interesting. Um, follow up question. Do you prefer like more judo based uh, throws and takedowns or wrestling based throws, uh, takedowns? It, it actually depends, right? Um, I, I'd prefer the wrestling aspect just because like it's sort of hard to throw people, um, especially in jiu jitsu. A, a lot of people's bases are real low. So if you're standing tall up high, you know, good posture here, I feel like it's a lot easier to throw. So whenever somebody's low and they're crunched over, it's a lot easier to shoot in on them to me. Uh, well, I'm going to skip the next question because you you already answered it. Uh, yeah. So uh, what do you enjoy the most about BJJ? I would just say the people I meet is probably my favorite thing about jujitsu. Um, I, I feel like there's, there's something about jujitsu that brings like, I don't want to say the weirdos or the introverts together, but I'm a big introvert, but it brings all the introverts, and the weirdos together. Right. And I think a lot of the people that I have met through jujitsu 
have always been the type of people who would stay quiet in school, not talk to anybody or just get on the bus and look straight to the ground. I was like that, you know, so I feel like it opens people up to conversation and just to learning more about the world and people around you. I agree with you on that. Yeah. Like most of my best friends on in the, in, in the uh, gyms that I train at are like, you know, introverts, like quiet guys, mm-hmm. not the loud, loud, uh, you know, the loud types. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. So um, when did you realize you wanted to be competitive in BJJ? Oh man, I would say probably after I seen my very first UFC, I decided, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to give this shot, try it out. Um, started my first uh, BJJ tournament, Naga, out of Newark, New Jersey. And then after that, I started to, you know, seek MMA and stuff. But I, I would say probably after watching my very first UFC. And do you prefer, like, the more um, IBJJF style competitions, or do, do you prefer more super fight type style uh, events? Good question. Um, and I'll tell you why it's a good question. <laughs> because IBJJF, the the level of knowledge that you get out of those tournaments is just like, it's incredible, right? You have Naga, you have Grappling Industries, you have very smaller tournaments, where which is more of like the local guys, right? But once you go IBJJF, you get people flying in from all over the country sometimes, you know, all over the world. And um, that's the reason why I like IBJJF, just because of how structured and and, and just the, the, the level of competition, right? But when it comes to super fights at the same time, right? All eyes on me, it's a great feeling, right? Things get super technical, it's nice and quiet. You get to think as opposed to being in a tournament where it's loud and everybody's screaming and yelling, right? right. So sort of a hit or miss, but I'd, I'd probably lean towards super fights. Okay. Um, do you have a favorite training partner? Um, I don't have a favorite training partner. Um, there's several people I like to roll with. Um, this one guy, Travis Sims, he's another black belt. Guy's awesome guy, great black belt. Um, he's probably one of the people that pushed me the most, so I'd say probably. So uh, you have a super fight coming up, right? Yes, I do, next weekend. Uh, could you give us a little bit of information on that? Yeah, it's going to be at the Fuji World Pro Series in uh, Springfield, Missouri. Um, I'm going to be competing against a guy by the name of Derek Ripley. Um, I know he's been featured on their, uh, on their World Pro Series for the past several years. Uh, I heard a lot of good things about the guy. Um, I look forward to it, you know. Um, I know he's a very good practitioner, but at the same time, I go into every match like, uh, like it's mine. Now, a l- little bit of a, a bonus question. Like, before we started yeah. recording, we ended up finding out that you know somebody that I, I train with. Yeah. So uh, why don't you go ahead and give uh, your story about uh, my buddy, Justin. <laughs> yeah, well, um, so I signed up for, uh, for the Master Worlds last year. And um, I was telling you how I had COVID and like all of September, October, I was sick for two months. It was horrible. And, you know, I just had no expectations. And um. I guess the last week I started to feel good and I saw the name Justin Lee Bennett. I'm like, all right, let me do some research. I found nothing on this guy. I don't know if he's got social media. He's got no videos. I found absolutely nothing. So I'm like, okay, you know, um, I'm just going to go in there and just wing it and go into the tournament, you know, uh, slap fist bump, uh, sweep him and take his back and get the choke after like two and a half minutes and tried looking for him after that, you know, to talk to him a little bit. I like talking to people and getting their information and, and, um, and just creating a bond, you know, Hey man, I'm going to the side of town. Let me go see you. We're going to the state. Let me go see you and train with you. And he just disappeared. And when, um, I got linked up with you, I looked at your profile. I'm like, Holy crap. That's the dude. Yeah. Well, um, anytime you're in the area. Yeah. Just I'll, I'll give you the information in the gym that I see him at and we could all link up. It, it'll be all good fun. Oh, definitely. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, folks, um, Rolando Torres, RT, uh, this is him in a nutshell. So, RT, we wish you luck in your super fight upcoming. Thank you. Um, I'm going to put your uh, cash app, PayPal, whatever type of um, information you have in that in that domain. I'll put that yes, in sir. the uh, link of the YouTube video when we post it.
And if anybody would like to give him any kind of donation or assistance for his training and gear and whatnot, that would be cool. Um, but yeah, we wish you luck in your upcoming super fight. And I thank you for your time, sir. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. Hold on one second.